Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of After Hours. I'm your host, John Francois, and you're listening to 90.1 FM, WECS. We are broadcasting from Eastern Connecticut State University in Willimantic, Connecticut. I hope you all had a wonderful Monday. It is the last Monday in September, and you know what that means. Uh, Put some leaves in your butt before springtime comes around yeah you see (laughs) you see whenever i try to like interact and make conversation with the audience it always turns into a leaves in your butt joke i apologize greatly uh but no um seriously i hope you all had a great monday i once again did not have such a great monday uh because i spent basically the entire day uh from like two or three in the afternoon literally up until now, you know, coming here to do the show, I, um, you know, I, I spent all those hours working on a paper. And guess what? I only got to, like, what, two and a half, three pages of that paper? Yeah. So you can bet there was a lot of procrastinating going on. So I may be well spent, but I'm definitely not well worn out. I'm... Well, ready to go for the uh, late night madness that is me. Uh, so stick around, get ready, buckle up, uh, put on your seat belts because I'm gonna put some gas in you. <laughs> yeah, you all watching this are thinking he's creepy. All right. Um. Obviously, the big news. We have to get to it. So let's just get it out of our chest. The Breaking Bad series finale. It was on last night. Um, I could not, um, catch the premiere, the first premiere showing of the final episode because I was working. However, um, when I got home from work around 10, 11-ish at night, I was able to, uh, catch, uh, the finale through, um, of course, a magical being called my DVR. I DVR'd the finale. And uh, might I say, it wasn't really that great. Um, I know, you know, for all you Breaking Bad fans out there, you want to murder me. You want to put some pancakes on my face. But uh, look, I got to be honest with you. Um, After the fourth season of Breaking Bad, uh, the show could go nowhere but down. Now, yes, the fifth and final season, I mean, it did have some standout moments. Um, Hank getting killed, uh... Uh, Hank finding out that Walter White is the meth drug kingpin, uh, the the meth drug uh, uh, funana, the meth drug. Ah, uh, can't talk, but uh, you get what I'm. You you get what I mean. He uh, Hank finds out stuff, and when he finds out stuff, and is going to act out on that stuff, it becomes wow, great television. Um, you know, Breaking Bad is one of those shows that gets really overhyped. It's one of those shows that everybody watches, everybody talks about, everybody Twitter, 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 and Facebooks like crazy. And uh, let me tell you, it's really not worth the hype. It's a good show. Honestly, it really is a good show. Uh, there is great chemistry uh, between the characters. Uh, there is a great premise, a brilliant story behind it, but... I'm telling you, we don't have to plan Breaking Bad watch parties. We don't have to have uh, Breaking Bad profile photos on Facebook. Uh, We don't have to create a hashtag, goodbye Breaking Bad, uh, talking bad, hashtag, 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 la 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 la, hashtag. Like, we don't need to do all that social media madness, okay? Let's just appreciate a television series as it is. You know, I I hate to seem old, but... um, Man, I wish it was 1965 right now where none of this social media um, phenomenon was there. I mean, you could just appreciate a television show, turn on the set, watch it, maybe talk about it at the water cooler the next day at work. I mean, that's it. That's it. Simple times. Let's go back to those times where we smoked weed like crazy and we were racist. Um... But yeah, I mean, if you have an opinion about Breaking Bad, if you thought the finale was beyond great, beyond magical, if you want to slap me upside the head right now, 860-456-2164, I'd be glad to hear you. I really would. Um, But seriously, though, news coverage, late night topical jokes, let's just stop it. I, I hope we can put an end to Breaking Bad since it actually ended the night before. Um, now, 
speaking of the news, all day, <laughs> all day while I was working on my paper, I happened to catch uh, CNN, and all they were covering was this government shutdown. Um, they had uh, the title government, uh, not no, not not government shutdown. They had the title shutdown countdown, shutdown countdown. That was the entire news coverage for the day. The shutdown countdown. You gotta love cable news because uh, they're you know making you know just like Breaking Bad. They're you know building up hype. They're building up suspense. They're building up anticipation. Like oh my god, everybody's gonna lose their jobs. Uh, national parks are gonna be closed. An apocalypse is gonna happen. Um, but you never know. Republicans and Democrats can actually reach a conclusion. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with what's going on in politics, you know, with our world today, I'll brief you a little bit. Uh, basically. Um, Democrats and Republicans in Congress, the House and the Senate in Congress, um, they have to agree on whether to fund or defund Obamacare, Obama's infamous health care plan, the Affordable Care Act. Um, if they don't reach a conclusion, if they don't reach a decision, then, you know, the government will shut down. We, won't have, we will have no government by 12.01 midnight the next day, which I think is around the time this show ends. So, haha, <laughs> the end of After Hours will coincide with the end of the government. Get what I mean? See the connection? Obviously you don't. I don't either. I'm not making sense at all. Uh, the point is, is that, um, you know, we've been through a similar situation two years ago. Um, I believe the government shutdown threat was over the debt ceiling or the fiscal cliff. I don't know what the hell it was. But it, it's, it's annoying because um, you have... A Republican-controlled House and a Democratic Senate. The House and the Senate make up Congress. The House is literally divided. Republicans are the majority in the House. The Democrats are the majority in the Senate. Do you think anything will get done? Probably not. I hate to be a cynic, but, you know, that's what President Obama asked for when he uh, lost uh, the, the House to the Republicans back in, like, the 2010 midterm elections, whatever the hell that was. Um, 2014 is when the next elections will be next year. So um, hopefully Obama, for his sake, for his sake, if he wants to be known as a good president, for his sake, I hope he can, uh, you know, win back control of the House so that you have a Democratic-controlled Congress. Now I don't, ha I have no political opinion whatsoever. I'm just saying, you know, it. I I'm just saying it from the standpoint of if the president wants to be successful. His party needs to control the whole damn Congress because if his party controls the whole damn Congress, then you get stuff done rather than, oh, 50-50, um, this whole 50-50 conflict divide thing. 50% uh, agree with this and 50% don't agree with this. You know what I mean? It's been, a, it's been a rough first term and first year of the second term for Obama. Um, hopefully, it, it turns around for him because honestly, whether... Uh, the president is Democrat or Republican, I think it's our job as Americans to say, eh, let's support this guy. He's our leader. He's our commander-in-chief. Let's put our, you know, butts behind him. Don't know what that meant. Don't think about it too much. Uh, the point is, let's put the politics aside. Let's work together for the good of the country. Really. And by the way, I've seen too much Newt Gingrich today. Newt Gingrich, uh, the former House Speaker, he was the uh, House Speaker for President Bill Clinton during his second term, and he's been on CNN all freaking day talking about uh, the government shutdown of 95 and 96 versus the possible government shutdown of today. So stop it, Newt Gingrich. Shut up. Go away. You're too fat. <laughs> no, I love you, Nick. I, I really do love Newt Gingrich. Uh, he's a really entertaining, funny guy. Um, if you see him, he looks exactly like um, the um, the Pillsbury Doughboy. A, a mix of the Pillsbury Doughboy, the gingerbread man. I mean, it's it's just a sexy mixture. Uh, fat guys, they really do please me sometimes. Um, all right, let's get into some birthday shout-outs. How about it? Happy birthday. And actually, may I point out uh, that these birthday shout-outs are belated. Uh, they're for throughout the month of September. So if uh, if this show did not come back in time for your birthday, I'm going to shout it out. And I'm going to get to some October birthday shout outs. So upcoming ones in the next few days. So listen closely for your name. Uh, Sarah Oshman, Christopher L., Gabrielle Palladino, Hendrickson Shauna, 
Martin Murdoch, Jason Marks, Brandon Marks, Quincy O'Neill, Jessica McDonald, Abdul Muhammad, Derwin Hill, Luce, Lucia J. Ruben Condrain, Martina Ivanok, Amy Helene Carlson, Brittany Miskell, and Philip Lipman. Happy belated and upcoming birthday to all of you people. Um, I thought I would be nice. You're my Facebook friends. Why not? All right. Before we get into our first song of the night, let's play a quick game. Which cereal do you feel like? Which cereal do you feel like? This is the game where I say a phrase that involves a certain cereal, but I'm not identifying the cereal. I'm just giving you a blank kind of clueless phrase. It's, uh, it's a tease. It's a tease. It's kind of like me grabbing your thigh in the middle of the night when you're sweating and having a bad dream. Which cereal do you feel like? I love a cereal that reminds me of dandruff in a garden. I feel like blank. Get it? No, you don't. Let me say it again. Which cereal do you feel like? I love a cereal that reminds me of dandruff in a garden. I feel like blank. Now, I said clueless not too long ago. I lied. Dandruff in a garden, that's your big clue. So if you can give me something, if you can give me a straight forward answer based on that clue, an intelligent answer, mind you, then you win $25,000. $25,000 in your imagination. All right, um, we have a great show coming up for you guys tonight, um, just in case the show has been crappy so far, which it obviously has. A um, couple of guys that I used to go to school with in Philadelphia, they have formed a band called Ill Dutes, uh, Kirshen Zacchaeus and Anthony Martinez Briggs. Uh, very great music. It's a mixture of, of rap, uh, jazz, rock. I mean, basically any type of music you can think of, it's all a mixture. It's, it's all combined together into this funky mixture soup. Um, they're really great guys. Uh, this song is called Undercover Uni Unions. Yep, Undercover Unions. It's Ill Dudes, and I believe you can Google their name. Google Ill Dudes, I-L-L -L space D-O-O-T-S, and you'll find them under, I believe, IllDudesBandCamp.com. I could be wrong. Uh, but they're really great guys, and you'll see why in just a second. We'll be right back with more After Hours, everybody. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Fuck around and live, huh?